Hello, landlords. It's Ernie Garcia, your landlord attorney. And today we're talking all about late fees. Let's get started. So late fees is one of those things that makes landlords a little bit uncomfortable. Many landlords don't even like charging late fees. Late fees are generally featured in a lease, but when it comes down to demanding them, there's some hesitation. Now I'm going to talk to you about why you shouldn't be hesitant to take late fees and then how you should go about collecting them. First, you definitely want to enforce your rights. If you have the right to assess a late fee, you really should enforce it for a couple of reasons. Number one, you want to make sure that your tenant is complying with the lease at all times. And by enforcing the late fee provision, you're likelier to discourage late payment and encourage payment on time. Additionally, if you fail to exercise a certain right at the beginning of the leasehold, it may be difficult for you later in time to enforce it. In fact, I've heard some judges say, well, if you weren't doing it from the beginning, I'm not going to let you do it at the end. It's not necessarily what the law says. And generally, your lease has a non-waiver clause, which says, hey, look, just because I don't exercise my rights early doesn't mean I can't later do them at the end. But that's a situation we sometimes find ourselves in. And so if, you, if you're consistent with the enforcement of your lease terms, you're, you're all the better for it. So, okay, you have decided you definitely will enforce late fees. Can you just charge whatever it is you want? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The Texas Property Code specifically limits late fees for uh, rentals that are uh, single family homes uh, and for multifamily homes. And so if you have a multifamily unit over four, then you're limited to 10% of the actual rent that is charged on a monthly basis. That's your limit. If you charge $1,000 and, and you are the landlord of a multifamily unit uh, with five or more units and you're charging $1,000, your limit on late fees is $100. Just the same, if you have a single family home or a duplex, uh, again, four units or fewer, and you're charging late fees, you're limited to 12%. So if you also have a unit that's for $1,000 each month, you are limited to $120 as the maximum amount that you can charge for late fees. Now, well, what if your actual costs exceed that number? It is possible to charge more, but you're going to have to prove to the court that you incurred actual costs. You may have for example, uh, mailing costs or collection costs. Maybe there's a fee that you are assessed uh, to hire someone to go and collect uh, these fees uh, strictly on the basis that the payment is late. If you can prove it, you can exceed that limit, but it has to be reasonable and 100% justifiable. So now you know the amount that you can charge. Now, how is it that you go about doing it? Can you do it on day one. Well, of course not. If rent is due on the first of the month, you definitely cannot charge a late fee on that date. So how long do you have to wait? Again, we look to the property code. Now, the Texas property code requires that you wait at least two full days after the due date. So if your rent is due on the first day of the month and you wait two full days after that due date, that means that the second and the third are off limits. You cannot charge late fees on the second or the third day of the month, which means that as of the fourth day of the month, you can begin to charge a late fee and you can charge a daily fee thereafter up to the maximum for your particular lease. Landlords, I hope you are enjoying uh, the video content that you get. As always, we ask that you come and follow us on Instagram. Join our Facebook group. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. If you enjoy what you watch, give us a like. Thanks. So then how do you go about collecting your late fees? Assume that your tenant on day 10 submits only the rent balance. What do you do? Well. 
If you have an application of funds clause, my recommendation is always to apply first any amounts to the fees that are properly owed. Maybe there's an unpaid deposit. Maybe you uh, collect utilities from your tenant and they haven't paid those. You could uh, pay those. And then now with late fees uh, assessed, you can deduct from the payment each of these charges by virtue of the application of funds clause in your lease. Make sure that you have that clause before you exercise this right. Assuming that you do, any of that deduction then leaves a rent balance for which you can send a notice of default to your tenant saying thanks for the payment, but you have failed to pay the full amount owed and you currently have a rent balance of X, whatever that, that difference happens to be. And your tenant may argue and say, no, 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 no. I paid the rent, I owe you utilities and I owe you a pet deposit and I owe you late fees, but I paid my rent. To which again, you will cite the application of funds clause in your lease as the basis for you applying first to those three things, no matter what the tenant wrote on their check or what message they may have sent you along with their uh, payment through some kind of cash app or some email message that they sent you contemporaneously with their payment. So what do you do if you don't have an application of funds clause? Well, that's going to put you in a tougher position, but, but you still have technically a default. If the tenant has violated the lease by failing to comply with some portion of it, again, they owe a pet deposit or they owe utilities and now they owe late fees, you can cite that as a breach of the residential lease agreement and you can serve them with a notice of default. You may be able to use this and any subsequent defaults in a future claim for possession. You may at a certain point say, look, you've done this three times in a row. I've sent you three notices of default. Now I'm sending you a notice to vacate. And it may come down to you taking a stronger position than maybe you have in the past in order to correct this negative behavior. Uh, additionally, you, it may never be corrected and the tenant may say, you know what, I will never pay my, my rent on time, I will never pay these fees or this deposit, uh, you'll have to take me to court. And unfortunately, if you have come to that position, your best option is to in fact file a lawsuit for eviction and move on from a tenant who apparently is not a good fit. If they cannot consistently pay the rent on time or abide by the lease, paying all of the fees that are owed and complying with all of the terms, they probably do need to move on. So collecting late fees shouldn't be seen as something that's bad. Consider it just another term in your lease that you are enforcing to make sure that you have a properly situated tenant in your rental property. Remember that by enforcing things early, you're likelier going to create a pattern of much better behavior down the line. If you and your tenant are on the same page with regard to the application of late fees right from the start, you're likelier to get a better response throughout the term of the lease. I hope you have found all of this quite helpful. And for more information from us about landlording and the things you should do to put yourself in a better position, there's a video right here that YouTube seems to think that you'll enjoy. And until next time, landlords, happy leasing.